I'm Teddy Mall. I'm a lead instructor here at Galvanize for the Web Development Immersive Program. And today we're going to be talking to you about whiteboarding and how to conduct yourself during a whiteboarding interview. What we'll be doing is going over the four steps of a whiteboarding interview. The first step is understand the problem. The second step is to devise a plan. The third step is to carry out the plan. And the fourth step is to review the code that you wrote. Jeff, thanks for coming in for some whiteboarding problems. Uh, today I have a function that I want you to write in JavaScript that will take in a string and return how many of those characters are punctuation marks. All right, not a problem, Teddy. So there are a couple edge cases that I'd like to know what you expect as a return. Um, if I'm given an empty string, what would you like back from that? Uh, zero. If I'm given a different data type, say an array, an object, what would you like back from that? Uh, you mean if I'm not given, if I'm not giving you a string? Yes. Uh, if your function receives something that's not a string, I'd like you to return undefined. Okay. And lastly, I'd like to know, do you want me to return the amount of each punctuation mark that occurs or the total amount of punctuation marks in the string? I just want the total number of punctuation marks across the entire string. Okay. So I'm going to write an example that takes care of a couple of those cases. And so this example should have four punctuation marks, and that's what I'd expect my function to return. Yes. The first thing that jumps out to me is that I am given a string, and then I'm going to have to iterate through all the characters of the string. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to use a for loop for that, from the most basic. But it also sounds like I'd be able to use a filter. Personally, I like to go with the for loop first to see kind of what's happening in the function, and then maybe getting it to a filter. But I'll take that down. So in carrying out the plan, making this come together, I'm going to have to make a uh, function. And so what I'm going to do is make a function declaration. And this happens to be ES6 notation. And so it's going to be const punctuation. And that is going to equal the string that's passed into it. And I'm going to set a default value to that that's just an empty string. And then I'm going to open up the function. So the first thing I want to check for in this that might break it is if it's not the right, um, the right type. So what I'll do is I'll say if str, and this is the value that's being passed in, if Oh, I'm sorry. So if the type of str is unequal to string, then what I want to do is return undefined. And so that's just taking care of that first case here that if I'm given something that's not a string, it's going to return undefined. So now in iterating through it and knowing what, that my return is going to be a value, I think I'm going to have to accumulate that value as I find it. So I'm going to make a counter that will take care of that. So I'm going to say let count equals zero and it'll start at zero. And then I'm going to start iterating through my string. I'm going to say for character of string, so it's saying for each instance of it, and it'll say if, and I want to check for those punctuation marks. Um, I would like to ask you, what do you consider punctuation marks? Uh, there are quite a few punctuation marks, but what I'd like to start off with are uh, period, comma, exclamation point, question mark, 
and semicolon. Great. So, if um, so, I want to check if each of those characters exist in that string. So, I'm going to write the string out. Dot, comma, exclamation, question, semicolon. And I'm going to say dot includes. character. And what this does is it returns a boolean. If it includes the character that's passed into it, it's going to return true or false. If it doesn't include it. So then in the case that it does include and gets into this if statement, I want it to increment that count because it means it is one of those characters. And then I'm going to go through and make sure that I have all my curly brackets closed. So this would be four, one, two, one, two. Then I have my if statement here is closed here, and then the opening for my function. So I'll close that off as well. And the only thing that I'm missing is actually giving the value back of the count. So down here, before I close the function out, I'll have to return count. And that'll ensure everything else runs, and then it'll return the count. The next step that I take in solving this problem is taking my edge case and stepping through the problem to make sure that I'm actually getting the value that I expect from it. And that'll also help me find any little errors I might have had in syntax and writing. Um, so I'll move over to this side and I'm gonna plug in this value here and that's A comma B exclamation exclamation question mark. So when that's passed into this function, it's gonna go in, it's gonna say, is the type of this a string? I'll just make it a string for it to be clear. And so it is, it'll go on, it's gonna say that the count is zero, and it's gonna say, for character of string, and it's gonna go through each of these. And in the first situation, it's gonna say, if A is included in this string, which is period, comma, exclamation, question, semicolon. If it's in there, increment the count. But because it's not, it's not gonna return anything. It's just gonna move through and go to the next character. For a comma, it is included, so the count will go to one. For B, it's not included, so the count will still stay at one. For the exclamation mark point, it'll increment, so it'll go to two. That's twice over. And then the question mark, we'll put it to four. I expected it to go to four, and I've gotten four there, so I'm satisfied that this would work. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I have one more question for you, and that is, what if I give you a really, really long string, like excessively long? Would you change your code in any way? So that would be a matter of time complexity, and um, this would be big over, and the worst, um, case scenario for this is that you're gonna have to iterate through every single digit in it. Um, so knowing that, there's not really much more I could do. It's possible to use a regex, but this seems like an optimal solution to me. Okay, wonderful, thank you. All right, thank you so much for watching our whiteboarding practice. What I'd like to highlight are the things that Jeff did during this session that you should be doing when you go in for a whiteboarding interview. The first thing is he understood the problem. He asked questions and made sure he knew what the inputs and outputs should be. The next thing he did was he devised a solution. So he talked through some of the ways that he could solve the problem. And then he carried out the plan. He wrote up a plan, he wrote up the code, and then finally, fourth step is really important and a lot of people miss it, and that is he checked through his code. He made sure the syntax was correct. He if you notice, checked all of his curly braces and made sure they were all there and it inserted some missing ones and he made sure that his code worked. And what I really want to highlight is the thing that he did really well and that is he talked through his code as he was writing it. So we knew exactly what his thought process was. So when you go for a whiteboarding interview, you should follow those steps. The four polio steps and then also talk through your code so that your interviewer knows that you are methodical and know that you have a process for solving your problems.